Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today we are finally doing a full review of this guy. This is the Civivi Rustic Gen. Now a couple of shout outs. Uh, I got this guy from Outdoor Gears Malaysia on Facebook. You can check them out. They're a local camping and knife store that you can find here in Malaysia. I have a little link in the description box down below so do check them out. Next thing, let's talk about what comes in the box. Uh, well, you have the knife itself. Okay, you have this little nice uh, leather sleeve with a little pocket clip right here. Pretty nice. Uh, I won't say it's like super high quality leather, but it does the job and it looks pretty darn good. You have, uh, but keep in mind, you can get some fuzzing from this kind of material on the inside. And once you take apart the knife, once you take apart the knife, you're gonna find some fuzzes inside the knives. Uh, but overall, it's okay. It's cute. It's pretty sweet. I really like the color. A couple of other things you get in the box, you get uh, some Survivi stickers. These are some uh, Wii knife stickers. Sorry. You get some wee knife stickers, they're really nice. And then you get a little uh, microfiber lens cloth type, not lens cloth. One of, one of these cloths right here with the brand Civivi, which is very nice because once you get this kind of blade, this kind of beautiful Damascus blade right there, you want to make sure that the blade itself is clean so that you get all the beauty of the knife. All right, so now let's get some uh, important measurements. You gotta get my calipers here. Switch it to inches. Now the blade length on paper is about three inches. So we can see here it's really right about three inch. Yeah, it's really right there. Three inch blade right there. You have a handle length of try to get the longest bit right here, 3.88 inches. That's what I'm getting. 3.89 inches right around there. You have a blade thickness of a nice and thin. 0.1 inches and with a hollow grind mind you and then let's talk about the height of the blade itself in case you want to carry this into your pocket at the stickers point right there you're getting about 1.16 1.1 hold on blade move there we go 1.16 inches and if you want to carry in the sleeve let's just measure this bad boy up you are gonna have a width of right over two inches now, we are going to measure the weight of the knife right here. So I'm going to do it, just the knife alone. And then I'm going to do it with the sleeve right there. The of gram is coming in at about 76 grams. By comparison, the Benchmade Bug Out is coming in at 53 grams or so. So this guy is 1.85 ounces. So this guy, I'm assuming is coming in at, I don't know, we'll do the conversions ourselves later. And then, uh, we are going to measure it with this guy right here. It's coming in at 99 grams. Okay, and then the pair of three lightweights coming in at 69 grams. So 69 grams is around 2.4 ounces. So you can expect this to come at about 2.5 ounces. Do correct me in the math department down below in the comment section. But okay, off to the knife. Let's start with our typical format from tip to butt. Let's start with the blade right here. We have a uh, a Damascus blade right here, a Damascus steel right here. You can see if I can get the light to focus on it. There you go. You can kind of see that kind of nice raindrop pattern that they have there and it goes all the way around the knife as well. Uh, you even get it down where it polishes up at the pivot. You can even see it there. So it's a true Damascus blade. It's not just printed on. And this Damascus blade, they don't say it on the website but from sources I've checked out online, it's based off of 9CR18 MOV. Uh, mixed with something else. I don't know what that something else is, but it's a pattern welded steel Meaning you're gonna get two steels together You're gonna melt them and then you kind of mix them up together and then you kind of get this pattern based on uh, how you mix them up together Very beautiful steel very very nice steel also quite a stain resistant steel Which I really like the original rustic gen uses a d2 steel, which is definitely gonna be tougher definitely gonna handle its uh, edge retention better however, I do appreciate the uh, stainlessness of this dam uh, this Damascus steel. And what's great about this is that this is a knife that I'm never going to hard use anyway, so I don't need the like grittiness of D2 steel. Now let's talk about the blade. The blade here, we have a clip point blade, so you have a nice little swoosh up that goes there. We have a very thin blade at 0 0.1 inches, which is thinner than this guy, the Para 3 lightweight, which is slightly, ever so slightly thicker than the Benchmade bug out blade. But it's so the difference is so small, you're not even going to see it. Now, the advantage of this blade is that it runs a hollow ground, uh, hollow ground, a hollow ground blade 
Okay, don't know if you can see it, but this is very much hollow ground. And what that means is that you have a very thin blade uh, stock that curves inwards as it gets to the edge. And then you are going to get one of the sliciest blades out there. This blade, it's so freaking slicey. You know, it's right up there to my top three sliciest blade that I have. We have this guy, very, very sharp blade as well. And then this guy, also very, very slicey. This guy is slicey because he also has a thin stock, has a flat ground, but the height of the grind uh, is a lot taller, which means it comes to a very, very keen edge. This guy right here, uh, the Rustic Gen, come because of that hollow ground uh, blade, uh, because of that hollow grind, it's going to come to a very, very thin edge. And this guy just slices amazingly. Coupled with that thin blade stock, it just cuts through paper, it cuts through material really, really nice. Now, granted, I've only ever used this for light cutting because of the steel type. It just looks gorgeous and I don't want to chuff that up. But just trust me, when it goes through paper, it goes through paper like it's so freaking smooth. Okay, so what is a clip point? To my understanding, is a clip point is something that you use to like carve out a uh, height from animal flesh or something like that. I don't know. A clip point is primarily primarily used as a hunting blade shape and I can see that you have a very nice very very thin tip here that comes from the clip point and then you have this nice belly that is great for kind of this rowing kind of cuts that you need to do so all in all this blade is designed to slice this is a slicing machine thin blade stock thin hollow grind nice clip point this just cuts through anything now it does have a nice little fuller right here uh, that is just for aesthetic uh, purposes in my opinion. I don't really find a use of this in any particular situation with the exception of you can use it to open up the knife and, and it actually provides a little bit of grip there. Whereas if it was completely smooth, it might just be a little bit slipperier. But because of that, you just have that little bit of extra friction to push it out. Not something I do very often. I do use this more as a two-hander uh, uh, two-hander opening and closing kind of knife just because it has a kind of Gen gentleman feel but you definitely can do that you're never going to flick it out okay because of that strong back spring it's never going to flick out okay it's never going to thumb flick out but you can definitely roll it out like so even with your left hand now moving back a little bit uh, let's go to the screws the screws all the external screws are t8 which is very nice if you want to take the knife apart and the internal screws are t6 uh, so just keep that in mind, uh, you definitely, uh, it took me off guard the first time I took it apart. I thought everything's going to be uh, T8 because I've had a CVV before and all the screws needed to take that uh, that knife apart were all T8 screws. But in this case, T8 on the outside, T6 on the inside. I really like the, the, the little CVV logo right here. It just contrasts well with the black and then it's nice and polished and just very, very nice. Also non-free spinning screws, which is very nice. I always appreciate a non-free spinning pivot. So much so that uh, this knife is non-free spinning, this knife is non-free spinning, this knife is non-free spinning. This knife is technically non-free spinning, but they locked out it so short, I can't unscrew it. The only knife I have that is a free spinning pivot is this guy, the ZT-0450CF. Uh, so I really appreciate that. It makes it easy to take this guy apart. Now, other than the gorgeous Damascus steel, one other thing that really stands out is the handles. The handles here are very nice. We have G10 in the back here. And it's not like a kind of rough G10 like uh, like this guy. This could be a polymer, but anywho. But it's not kind of a rough G10 like you see on the Para 3 or the PM2. It's a very nice and smooth and smoothed out G10. Very, very nice in the hands. And then coupled with that, it leads into this very nice carbon fiber. Now, I do appreciate nice looking carbon fiber. The ZT here has a nice carbon fiber. It has this kind of a snake scale kind of carbon fiber, which I really like. It has nice texture. This guy, this carbon fiber is a bit slipperier, but it's also a bit shinier. It has almost like a jewelness to it. I can just show you in the light right here, how it bends and reflects, reflects the light. Very, very nice. Very, very nice and jeweled. And also, the little gap between here and here, you can barely feel it. In fact, when you take the knife apart, they're going to come apart uh, exactly the same. They're somehow like, I, I don't know if they're glued together or stamped together or what, but they do come apart uh, together. So that's very, very nice. You have nice uh, rounding off at the edges here. It's not chamfered, but it's not uncomfortable. All these edges here are nice and rounded off, so you don't get any sharp corners uh, at, the, at the edges. And that goes all the way around. Even the steel liners on the inside, it's bead blasted, and then all the edges on the inside are also rounded. So you don't have all these sharp edges that you can see from, uh, let's say, a Spyderco. Okay, these edges right here, pretty darn sharp. Benchmade bug out. These edges right here, pretty darn sharp. 
It's a very pretty darn smooth, even on the inside. And that bead, bead blasting also makes it quite smooth to the touch. Also gives it this kind of matte finish. It's not like slippery, like if it was satin finish, but it has this kind of smooth matte finish, which I really, really like. Now, back spring. A uh, couple of good things about back spring. Number one, it's extremely strong. Okay, number two, you are uh, you can use this ambidextrously. You can use this with your left hand and also your right hand. Okay, so that makes it completely ambidextrous coupled with fullers on both sides. This is a completely ambidextrous knife. It doesn't have a clip. Okay, the clip comes from uh, this guy right here. He doesn't have a clip. So this just makes it like, I do prefer a clip to be honest. The new Civivi, the one that looks like this but is a flipping slip joint. Okay, double detached slip joint. That one has a clip. That one appeals to me a bit more because once you put it in here and you put it in your pocket, it is comfortable, but it does feel a little bit bulky. I personally prefer a pocket clip rather than a slip right here, uh, even with a pocket clip. But this is very much an ambidextrous knife. You can use this with your left hand, perfectly the same as you would with a right hand. Now let's talk about something I don't like about this knife. This assembly of this knife is quite difficult. Uh, the first time I disassembled it, completely failed. I had to take it to my friend who's a mechanical wizard. Uh, he managed to disassemble it, but it took both our hands. He, we needed three hands to take this knife apart fully. And then eventually we learned how to do it the right way. So you can check out that video, that, that actual disassembly video is on my channel. Uh, uploaded it recently, so you can check it out. Uh, you pretty much treat this as if it was an integral or benchmade access lock where you open it up, take out that screw, take out this screw, take out this screw, open that up. Okay, and then what you do is you push this pivot out. You have to lift up the uh, the spring bar, the back lock right here. Push this out, and then uh, then you can just remove this blade itself. Then you clean the inside as you would need to, and then you put this back in, and then you kind of screw everything back into place. Now the reason why that is is because uh, the spring tension of the see in the back here, there is a little spring that goes underneath the lock bar. So this depression has spring tension because of that spring steel. Now, once you put everything together, what happens is that steel is causing a lot of torsion in the internal screws and they will not line up. They will not line up properly. The only way to line it up properly is that if you reduce that spring tension completely, then everything goes back in. But it requires that spring tension to create its tolerance, to create the tightness in, uh, in, in its design, to create the tension that's needed to have this good fit and finish. So you can definitely take it apart, clean it, put it back together, but then the blade has to come in after these two pieces have been screwed down together. Okay, not the worst thing, it is uh, not, it's not that much worse or it's, it's just as good or just as bad as a Benchmade access lock to take apart and put together. The only advantage is that the springs of the Benchmade access lock tends to be the, the breaking point. I don't foresee a breaking point in this knife at all. That little metal spring in there that kind of holds the bottom of this back lock, uh, that is at the bottom of this back lock, is pretty darn thick and it's pretty darn strong. Another thing that took me off guard is how strong this back spring is. Now, I come from the realm of the only other back lock I've ever had was a uh, Spyderco Dragonfly. And that back lock was pretty, pretty, pretty light. I mean, it's pretty easy to use. And I've used the Native 5 back lock before, also an easy back lock to use. This guy right here tends to be a little bit hard, okay? It's not bad, it's just that it's a lot harder than you would expect and that kind of makes it difficult to do the kind of things where you unlock this and it drops a little bit. Right now I have it a little bit tight, so it's not going to drop because although you can do that trick where you press this and then you flick it down and then you stop it to, because it does have a half stop, okay? It stops right there. It does have a half stop. So how you get it to the half stop is that you press that and then you kind of flick it and then you have to time it perfectly so that the half stop stops it like that. But I've had, in many occasions, at least six where I mistimed the half stop or the pivot was a bit too loose where I lift this up, flick it down, and then it just passes that half stop and then goes straight onto my finger. And this knife, I call this knife the beast because this knife has cut me more than any other knife I've ever had. Every other knife I've had, except the Parallel 3 Lightweight, has uh, clipped me before, give me a little love bite somewhere and has cause blood. This guy combined has caused me more blood than all of the other knives on my table right now, which is all the knives that you saw earlier. So that is why I call this knife the beast. And yeah, that's pretty much it. In conclusion, uh, what kind of knife is this? This is very much a gentleman's knife. This is very much a slow knife that you keep in your pocket. Okay, and then when you want to pull it out, you pull it out. Okay, then you pull it out open. Two-handed is the safest way you use it. Two-handed, close it. 
put it back in your sleeve and then put it back in your pocket. It is not a, oh, I need a knife, take this out, fire it out, cut, put it back in and all that. Now because of that, when you're buying this knife, yes, you're buying a knife that is very secure because it is a backlog. You're buying a knife that is very uh, good for slicing because of this hollow ground, this thin blade stop. But more, more often than not, you're going to buy this knife for its aesthetic, for its gentleman qualities. And if you're looking for a gentlemanly kind of knife, uh, you have this kind of knife for you. Now, are there other options? Yes, the CGRB Rear is also a very nice gentlemanly kind of knife. Uh, if you want to go really, really expensive, you can go with the uh, Chris Reeve uh, knife, the Menandi. Uh, Menandi, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Menandi. That's also a very gentlemanly kind of knife. But if you want a knife that looks great, that has good utility in terms of its function but being high speed, low drag, being fast is not important to you you're going to want this knife now would I keep this knife? I think ultimately no I've had the fun that I've wanted to have with this knife I kind of got the feeling of what it's like to have a more traditional aesthetic kind of knife but I've realized that it, it's important for me to be able to pull out a knife, click it open, cut close it one hand and put it back in my pocket for two reasons. Number one, uh, I like the efficiency and number two, I like the fidget factor and this knife doesn't really have a fidget factor. And if you see in one of my earlier videos, like the reason why I get a knife is for three main reasons. Number one, it is function uh, that I can use it on day to day. Number two, it is fidget because I do fidget with my knives and then number three, it is fashion. And this is like two out of three, but it is just really really far down that fidget factor area. Okay guys, uh, that is all. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day. And yeah, do check out all the links in my description box down below. Thanks guys, stay ready.